Welcome to the second lesson on probability from actuarialpath.com. In this lesson, we will learn about sample space, events, and compound events. In lecture number one, we learned about basic tools in set theory. And in this lecture, we will extend those tools that we have. Let's start with a sample space. A sample space is a collection of all possible outcomes of an experiment. Sample space. Collection of all possible possible outcomes of an experiment. Let's consider an experiment of tossing a coin. In this case, your sample space which is denoted by capital letter S, contains the elements, heads, and tails, because you have two possible outcomes, and those are heads or tails. If your experiment consists of rolling a die, a six-sided fair die, then your sample space contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, five and six. If your experiment consists of monitoring the time to failure of a machine, let's say that is time to failure of a machine, then your sample space now cannot be listed as in the case of the first two examples. But it could be any value between 0 and infinity. What you can see here is the first two sets are countable sets, while the last one is uncountable set. And what we like to do is we would like to assign probability that an event happens uh, maybe an event of interest could be the event of tossing heads, or maybe the event of rolling a number three, or maybe we're interested in uh, the probability that the machine fails within the first 24 hours. To do all those, we need to define an event. Therefore, an event. is a subset of the sample space which is of interest to us. Let me take an example. The first example which is tossing a coin. The sample space contained heads or tails. Maybe the event I am interested in is the event of tossing heads. If I toss heads, let's say I win. So I could find the probability that I win, which is the probability of A, to be the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in the sample space. In this case, I can count the number of elements in A as well as the sample space, and the probability of A is 1 over 2. If my experiment was rolling a die, the sample space is the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Let's say I win if I roll 5 or 6. So I can define the event B, which is a subset of the sample space, let's say 5, 6. And it is of interest to me because if I roll 5 or 6, I win. And I could also find the probability of B to be the number of elements in B divided by the number of elements in the sample space, which is 2 divided by 6. If the experiment involves monitoring time to failure of a machine, our sample space was 0 to infinity, the interval 0 to infinity. 
and let's say we are interested in the event that the machine fails within the first 24 hours. Our event of interest is the interval 0 to 24. We could actually find the probability of D. We don't really have the tools to do it now, but in the coming lectures we will have the tools to do it and we will find probabilities such as this. Here we have simple events which are subsets of the sample space. But we can combine these events to form compound events. Compound events are formed by combining simple events using set operations. I'm going to list some of the set operations that are needed to combine events. And the first one I'm going to look at is complementation. Let's say I have an event A, which is a subset of the sample space. Then the complement of A, A complement, which could be written as A superscript C, or some authors like to write A prime, so use whatever you want to use. But remember that A complement contains elements in S. Let me write that contains elements in S, which is in the sample space, that are not in A. A quick example here, let's say the sample space contains the numbers 1 to 6. Maybe you roll a die. 5 and 6. And the event A could be the set containing 5 and 6. You win if you flip, you win if you roll 5 or 6. Then A complement is the set that contains elements in the sample space that are not in A. So those elements are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that is A complement. If you like to use Venn diagrams, which I do, by the way, you have your sample space, and let's say you have event A here, which contains the elements 5 and 6. And outside of your event A, you have A complement. And if 5 and 6 are in here, then you must have 1, 2, 3, and 4 in A complement. The second set operation is the operation of intersecting two sets. And we've covered intersection of sets in lesson number one. I'm just going to do a quick example here again, because we've done it already. Let's also consider a sample space of rolling a die. So you have that sample space. And define event A to be the event of rolling 5 or 6. Also define event B to be the event of rolling an even number. That would be 2, 4, or 6. Then the intersection of the events A and B, A and B, or A intersection B, is the set. So I have two sets, A and B. 5 is in A, but it's not in B. 6 is in A, and it is also in B, so 6 must be in the intersection of A and B. 3, union is also another set operation we use to combine two events, or two or more events. I'm simply going to use this example again. So we have the sample space. Event A is 5 or 6. Event B is 2, 4, and 6. So I can find A union B, A or B, to be the set 2, 4, 5, and 6. I can use a Venn diagram. Let's say that is A. And let's say A contains 5 and 6. And let's say we have B, which contains 2, 4, 
and 6. So the intersection is the overlap, but the union is all the region here. That's the union. And also this is the sample space. I could also find the set A union B complement. I could do complementation of compound events. And when I do that, what do I have? I have 5, 6, 2, 4 in the union of A and B. What else is left? 1 and 3 are in the complement of A union B. As set differences. Set difference. I'm going to use the same example to illustrate what I mean by set differences. So we had the sample space, which contains the numbers 1 to 6. Rolling an eye. And event A contained the elements 5 and 6. Event B contained the elements 2, 4, and 6. Let's find the set B minus A, the difference between B and A, which can also be written as B minus A. And this is the set of elements in B that are not in A. So that contains the elements 2 and 4. Let me use Venn diagram. That would make it easier. So we have the sample space, which contains the numbers 1 to 6. We have event A that has elements 5 and 6. And we have event B, which contains the numbers 2, 4, and 6. And we also said A union B complement contains the numbers 1 and 3 the part in B, which is not in A, is the following region. It's that region. That is B minus A. Operation number five is the symmetric difference. Symmetric difference. The symmetric difference is the set that contains elements in one, but not the other. If I have set A and B within the sample space, elements in B, but not in A, is that one. The elements in A that are not in B, which is that one. The symmetric difference is denoted by the following. A triangle B, A symmetric difference B, is... As you can see, that's the union of these two regions. The first region is A minus B. Union. The second region, which is B minus A. Another way to write the symmetric difference is A triangle B is equal to B. You take away the intersection from the union. So you have A union B minus a intersection B is also equivalent to the symmetric difference between A and B. Okay. Other identities which I would like you to check oh, are the following. A complement complement is the set A itself. I also want you to show the complement of an empty set is the sample space. Complement of the sample space is the set empty set. Also show that A union itself, A, is A. A intersection A is A. A union, the empty set, is the set A itself. A intersection, the empty set, is the empty set. We don't really have time to do all that, but uh, you can use Venn diagrams to show this, or you can use formal proof to do it. And A union, the sample space, is the sample space. A intersection, the sample space, is the set A. 
event A union A complement is the sample space. Event A intersection A complement is empty set. Now we will look at disjoint events. Disjoint or mutually exclusive sets. What we mean by that is one event does not include the other one. The best way probably to explain this is again using Venn diagrams. So that's a Venn diagram, that's the sample space. So we have event A and event B here. And the two events do not have any intersection here. So I can say event A and B are mutually exclusive or they are disjoint. Therefore, if a intersection B is empty set, then A and B are disjoint. I'm going to finish this lecture by listing some properties of unions, intersections, and complements. Let's say we have events A, B, and C, which are subsets of the sample space. The first property I would like to list is commutative property. This is a property of unions and intersections, and it simply says A union B is the same as B union A. Or a intersection B is the same as B intersection A. The second property is associative property. For events A, B, and C in the sample space, I can make a compound event A union B, which again I can compound with C in the following way, union C is the same as a union B union C. Likewise for, for intersection, A intersection B is a compound event, and I can do the intersection of that event with C, and that is equal to A intersection B intersection C. You can show this using Venn diagrams, and I'd like you to show that if you don't understand this. The next property is distributive property. Again, I have three events, A, B, and C. A union B is a compound event. And I can compound this again with an intersection with C. So A union B intersection C is equal to, this is the same as somehow distributing C into A and B. So I can write this as A intersection C union B intersection C. Likewise, A intersection B union C is equal to A union C somehow distribute the union intersection B union C. Again, please show this using Venn diagrams or a formal proof. And the last property, which is a property of unions, intersections, and complements, is what we call the De Morgan's rule. Morgan's Law, and it says A union B complement is the same as distribute the complement, A complement, but then change the union to intersection, then you have B complement. So A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement.
again, please show this using Venn diagrams. And A intersection B complement is equal to A complement. Now the intersection changes to union. Union B complement. This is again true for more than two events. Maybe you have events A1, intersection A2, intersection A3, intersection A4. Let's say we have N events. Intersection AN. If you take the complement of that, you can write this as A1 union, I'm sorry, A1 complement union, A2 complement union, A3 complement union, all the way up to AN complement. This is true again for A1 union A2 union A3 union, all the way up to, let's say, AN. And if you take the complement of that, that is equal to A1 complement intersection, A2 complement intersection, A3 complement intersection, intersection AN complement.